Hey guys, so in this video we will look at storage APIs. A storage API helps us and gives us flexibility to store data in Chrome browser. So you can keep certain data points or certain array or certain local configuration in the storage. So one thing to note is it's not a full-fledged database. So it has certain limits of how much data it can store or how much uh, data transfer it supports. So you can go and read about those things in throttling. So you have a section of throttling here, storage and throttling limits. So you can read about that here. To use a storage, you need a storage permissions. And there are two APIs. One is sync API, one is local API. So there are, the only difference between sync and local is whenever you use local API to set or uh, set the data in the storage, it's only saved in your current local browser. But whenever you use sync API, your data is synced across all the logins. So what I mean by that is if you click here on your persons, as you can see, there are three persons, person one, person two, and there's one tutorial person. These two are synced, these two are my other email IDs, but this is not synced. So if I turn on sync, it will ask me to log in, log in into Chrome. So sync API helps us sync data across all the users. So let's say if I have an extension which is, by, which is being used by both these logins, then I can have the data synced for, for both the persons. You can go ahead and use sync very safely uh, because if, even if I have not turned on sync, it will work like local APIs. So it won't really throw an error if you are not logged in. Unless you don't really want to sync data, then you can use local. So let's go ahead and try to use this. So first I need the permissions. So I'm using water reminder again extension here to show the experiments and use the show API storage. Okay. In the background, I'm going to use both the APIs. Chrome dot storage dot sync dot first I'll set the data. So let's say my key name is name and the value is Stuart. Once I save, I'll get a callback. This will only run once the set is finished. So when set runs, so let's console log value is set and then you can also get data. So chrome dot store dot sing dot get and I need to get the name key. function it will have a result which stores the result and I can go ahead and console log result so let's try and run this go ahead refresh in the background page I see value is set and the real in object when name is stored so this is how you can use a storage API and it's pretty handy for a lot of extensions let's say in the water extension if uh, I set let's say 12 minutes now every time I open my browser, I don't want to set the 12 minutes. So whenever someone says remind me, you can save the data in the browser storage. And once you load the extension, whenever someone opens the browser again, you can load data from the from the storage. So in this case, you are providing a seamless experience to the user. So yeah, this is it for the storage API guys. Uh, we are done with our all of our concepts in Chrome extension. And in the next video, we will start with our full-fledged extension, one extension which we'll use and to showcase all the APIs in action and we'll build a momentum cl clone. I guess that's the best thing I can think of right now. So momentum chrome extension. If you don't know this extension, this is, this, this is a very good extension I use it every day. So it overrides your new, new tab and it gives you a good background on the, on the in the new tab with a nice picture, your weather, your to-do list, some codes, time and all those things. So we will create an override or we will create a clone of this momentum extension and we will use all the APIs and concepts we have done so far in Chrome extension to build this. So share to you and I'll see you around in the next one. Thank you.